Hey guys, Micro here. Welcome to my 1 to 99 smithing guide. I'll be covering many different methods for getting to 99. I will cover the conventional ways and some more unusual methods that you might not know about that may help you. First off, I want to talk to you about a few useful items. The first useful item is the portable forge. Always use the portable forge when you can while training smithing. This portable forge gives a 10% experience buff and a 10% chance to save a bar when smelting an ore or smithing a bar. You can smelt and smith both on this portable forge. To find where a portable forge is you can join the French chat portables. If you ask for a location for the forge they normally reply really fast and give you a world and a location where the portable forge will be hosted. Normally they host a portable forge next to a bank's chest so typically this bank chest is in the combat academy in Lumbridge. Next up we have the scroll of efficiency. This scroll costs 20,000 dungeoneering tokens and has a percentage chance to save a bar when smithing items that require 3 or more bars to make. The scroll requires 55 smithing and dungeoneering to acquire. The percentage is dependent on the tier of the bar. This means the higher the tier of the bar the less chance to save a bar it will have. The tiers are as follows. Bronze is 50%, Iron is 25%, Steel is 20%, Mithril is 10%, Adamant is 8% and Rune is 5%. Combine the portable forges 10% and this scrolls 8% on Addy bars, it would give you a good chance to save a bar and sometimes even double proc when you're lucky. So when doing high end bars it still has a really good chance to proc and can easily save you a ton of money, it's unreal. The next item is goldsmith gauntlets. These gauntlets increase the smithing XP on bars from 22.5 experience each to 56.2. This is over double the normal amount of experience. You need to complete the family crest quest to obtain and use these gauntlets, but it definitely is worth doing. If you already have the quest complete but have other gauntlets, you can change them at any time by speaking to Avon at the deep side. These gloves do not work during double XP weekends unfortunately, but they do stack the Portable Forge's 10% buff. Another useful thing to have is the Clan Avatar. You will need to collect and deposit 300 Anagogic Orts to gain 1 week worth of Clan Avatar buffs. You get a 6% XP bonus while standing close by to the Avatar and a 3% bonus for just being in the same world as it. The same world bonus is really useful when doing things such as Artisan Workshop but it can be really tricky at times if you're doing portables and using the portable FC hopping worlds but it's still something very useful to consider. The next useful item is the Varric Armour. You have four different levels from each of the tasks starting at easy and ending with elite. Varric Armour 1 gives you a chance of smelting two bars at once up to and including steel bars. Once you get Varric Armour 2, your double smelt chance applies to Mithril and you gain a chance of smithing an item faster, applying up to and including Adamant. Varric Armour 3 lets the double smithing chance apply to Adamant also. And then finally Varric 4 allows the smithing items faster proc chance to work with Rune Bars too. These armors are good at increasing experience per hour with the smithing faster procs but ultimately do not save you any money just time. If I was going to get any armor while leveling, I would stop at Varric Armor 2 because it will give you your chance of smithing an item faster up to Adamant and you won't be smithing anything more than Adamant when doing these methods. The last useful item is the blacksmith's outfit. It's from the treasure hunter and if you received any pieces of this outfit from the treasure hunter, wear it whenever you smith. It gives a 1% bonus to your XP gains per piece and gives 6% when you have all 5 pieces. You might as well wear it for the extra experience. Levels 1 to 29 are really nice and easy. All you need to do is the Knight Sword quest. It gives you 12,725 XP. It takes about 10 minutes to do and it only requires 10 mining. Once you've done your Knight Sword quest, you need to get from 29 to 30. To do this, just smith some iron bars. You'll need to smith 47 bars if you're using the portable forge. If you're not using a portable forge, you'll have to smith 51 bars. The first set of methods I'm going to show you are the Artisan Workshop. Artisan Workshop is a popular method because it's really AFK and easy to do. To start, between levels 30 and 45 you are going to want to make iron ingots free. These ingots require 12 iron ore to make. 
201 ingots are needed to get to level 45 if you do not follow the orders. This will cost around 900k to 1 mil. 183 iron ingots will be needed to get to 45 if you do follow orders and it will only cost around 800 to 875k instead. To get to the artisan workshop you need to go to Valador and if you run far east in Valador artisan workshop is there. You can take noted ores in order to make your bars. All you gotta do is right click and deposit ores. You can deposit your iron and your coal and everything you need to do here. So I deposit all my iron. Make sure you put your tier to three. We want the iron ingot freeze or the steel ingot freeze. Once you have the ingots you want, all you need to do is smith on the anvil. If you look up here, it says current instructions is helm. So if you want to be less AFK but gain 10% buff, if you look at the current instructions and do what it says, you get your 10% buff. If you want to fully AFK and not get the 10% buff, that's fine. You'll get it sometimes occasionally just by making the same thing over and over again when it changes to it anyway. But literally this is all you've got to do. Artisan Workshop is this AFK, you can watch a movie, you can do whatever you want, this is why it's such a popular method. From levels 45 to 60 you're going to want to be making steel ingots free. You will need to make 600 steel ingots free if you are not following orders to get to level 60. This will cost around 3.8 mil to 4.2 mil. If you are following orders you will need to make around 546 steel ingots and it will cost between 3.4 mil to 3.8 mil. Still ingot free are around 120k to 140k experience per hour. From level 60 to 70 you're going to be want to be making mithril ingots free. You will need to make 1149 mithril ingots free if you are not following orders and this will cost between 6 mil to 6.5 mil. If you are following orders you're going to be want to be making 1044 mithril ingots free. This will cost around 5.5 to 6 mil GP and mithril ingots free are around 150k to 160k experience per hour. Lastly for levels 70 to 99 you're going to want to make adamant ingots free. 21,650 adamant ingots free will be needed if you're not following orders. This will cost around 170 to 180 mil. If you are following orders, you will need 19,682 Adama ingots free. This will cost around 155 to 165 mil. Adama ingots free are 210k to 230k XP an hour. Personally, I did not use the Artisan Workshop. I did Claws. So from level 58 to 83, you can do Mithril Claws. With the claws being used a lot in invention, the parts always maintain a good price. You will need to make 22,261 mithril claws to get from 58 to 83 while using a portable forge. You would profit around 2.5 to 3 mil making these claws currently and portable procs would profit you just under 300k on top of this during this time. It's a very good alternative over Artisan Workshop. It's slightly less AFK but it's not too bad. Mithril claws are 100k to 120k XP an hour. Once you're 83 you can start doing adamant claws. Again adamant claws are really good because they're used a lot in invention for parts so they keep their price. 83 to 88 you're going to need to make 12,456 adamant claws while using a portable forge. You would lose around 1.7 to 1.9 mil making these claws. The portables procs would save you just under 200k during this time too so you would lose around 1.5 to 1.7 mil. Adamant claws are between 130 and 155k XP an hour. Finally between level 88 to 99 you're going to want to make adamant plate bodies. These are amazingly fast and efficient way to get 99 smithing. I personally use this method. Use a portable forge and a scroll for efficiency for major money saving and props. 25,160 adamant bodies with a portable forge for 88 to 99. With a scroll and the forge you will cut the loss from 120 to 130 mil 
right down to around 45 to 70 mil depending on how lucky you are with the props you should save around 20 to 25 thousand bars so that saves around 55 to 75 mil personally it only cost me 35 to 40 mil to get from 88 to 99 I guess I was just majorly lucky Adamant bodies are also 340k to 400k XP an hour with a portable forge that's absolutely insane these are definitely my favorite method to get to 99 another great way to train your smithing is corrupted ore at level 89 corrupted ore is unlocked as long as you have access to Crifton's Corrupted Ore is a great way to AFK Smith. 150 XP per ore is great, and 180 XP per ore during the Voice of Seren is even better. You can gather the Corrupted Ore while mining Seren Stones at 89 plus mining in Priftonus, or you can use the Crystal Keys on the Lawith Chest in Priftonus to get Corrupted Ore pretty easily. I have a link in the description for a guide to get easy ores from that chest. You can smell around 1500 ore in an hour which gives 225k XP or 275k XP during the voice of Seren. The final method is gold bars. With gold smith gauntlets gold bars are a cost effective way in order to get those early levels of smithing easily and even profiting. Some people go further than the early levels with gold bars but I don't think it's worth it personally but it's still a viable method either way. Using a portable forge and gauntlets the bars are 61.82 xp per. Only using the gauntlets the bars are 56.2 xp per. Gold bars will profit you around 2 to 2.5 gp per xp gain. Each bar can profit you around 100 to 130 gp. The money made really adds up and is still pretty afk. You need level 40 to smith these bars and it's around 70 to 85k XP an hour which is really great for that level. I'd advise maybe switching to Myth Claws around 58 but do these until then. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you want to see more 1 to 99 guides and which ones you would like to see. I really enjoyed making this video and I'd love to make more. Until next time, bye!